What's up, I'm Troubleshoot. In my previous two videos, I covered setting up a dedicated Hightail server completely for free and how to mod said server. But if you'd like to mod your own Hightail client for playing in single player worlds, or of course, inviting friends that way, here's exactly how you mod Hightail. There's two major ways of doing it, but we'll get into it in just a second. For now, this video was sponsored by Apex Hosting. If you're looking for a powerful Minecraft or Hightail hosting platform, look no further. Apex Hosting is a fantastic choice with powerful hardware to choose from, fantastic customer support, automated backups, unlimited slots, and so much more. You can't go wrong Apex Hosting. Simply head across to the first link in the description down below and check the top of the page for the current coupon code. Right now, it's Apex 25 for 25% off your first order. When you're ready to get started, choose Get Your Server, and then select Minecraft, Java, Bedrock, High Sale, or any other game for that matter. Choose your server config, make sure you're using a coupon code, and in no time, you'll have a powerful High Sale, Minecraft, or any other server for that matter set up, ready for you and your friends to play on. A huge shout out to Apex Hosting for sponsoring this guide. To start off, the best place right now to get mods and the only real place is CurseForge, but I assume in the future it'll expand to Modrinth and other platforms, and of course you can download custom mods from GitHub, etc but they're only installable using the second method, which I'll show you. The two methods are, first of all, using the CurseForge app, which is the easiest way thus far, and the second way is manually installing plugins. Depending what you're looking for, you'll find timestamps down below. Starting off with the CurseForge app, if you don't already have the CurseForge app, head across to curseforge.com and choose Get the CurseForge app, download the standalone version, unless you want Overwolf as well, I'd recommend the standalone version, and when you get it, you can open it up. You'll of course see Minecraft, if you've got that set up, and Hightail, assuming you've got it installed. If not, hit the plus, add, scan your computer, or manually add Hightail. Assuming Hightail is installed on the default spot, that's where it'll be. From the Hightail main page, you can head across to Discover at the top and install basically any mod from the website here. If we, for example, download the home plugin by choosing Install, either on the plugin preview here or clicking it and choosing Install in the top right, once you do, it'll head across to your My Mods folder where it's visible here as well. All we need to do now is actually boot up our game and things should be working as you'd expect. So if we fire up Hightail, either using this button up here or the usual client, you'll eventually hit the menu. And of course, we're about to load into a single player world here where our mod should be active. However, if you do, you'll notice it's not exactly working out of the gate. What you need to do is right click your single player world that you want to customize and then enable mods from the mod list here. Simply tick the checkbox next to it, choose save world settings in the bottom right. And just like that, whenever you load into your single player world, you can now see that we can slash set home. And if we run off in a different direction over here, we can slash home and we'll be teleported back. Just right now, the mod makes you look up whenever you're teleporting, which is a little bit odd. Jumping in the water again, there we go, slash home, bam, back to where we were before. Pretty simple. Of course, I'm not a massive fan of the CurseForge client. There's just too many ads plastered all over the place. Instead, if you'd like to manually mod Hightail, what you need to do is head across to CurseForge once more and choose a mod to install. Let's go for, say, view all. Let's sort by total downloads and we can download maybe the better mod list. Sure, I'll select it. That's what it should look like. We can use slash mod list. Sweet. Let's go ahead and download in the top right. And now we'll be left with either a .jar file or a .zip file. What we need to do with this is drop it in a specific location. Now, the directory differs slightly depending on what system you're on. In Windows, it'll be in app data high sale. On in Linux, it'll be in the data home high tail folder. And on macOS, it'll be in the home folder application support high tail. What you need to do to install your mod is hold start or the Windows key and press R to open up a run dialog box. Inside of here, type percentage app data percentage backslash high tail and hit OK. When you do, a folder will open and of course you'll see your high tail data here. Now inside of the user data folder right here, followed by mods, inside of here is where you can place your .jar or .zip files. If you download a mod as a .zip, odds are you don't need to extract first. So just go to your downloads folder, select your jar or zip file and drag and drop it into this folder here. When you do, you've now successfully installed a brand new mod. All that's left to do is to close that up high sale if you're already in it, or just head back to the main menu where you can then head into worlds, right click your world, and you should see a brand new plugin here. If we tick the better mod list, save and load into the world, now we can use the slash mod list command, which should allow us to 
let's see, slash mod list, bring up a list of all the different mods currently installed. A lot of them come by default, so that's why there's a lot more here than you'd expect. And of course, we can turn off the default ones or show only mods with descriptions, for which unchecking it shows us even more default mods that don't have any explanation to them. The reason that High Sales got a lot of these built-in features like this is because you can disable specific features of the actual base game itself, making modding even more extensive. But besides the point, those are the two major ways of modding High Sale. Once you understand the manual method, I much prefer that compared to the Curse Forge app, especially if you've got Overwolf installed. The less things you have running on your system, the better your games can perform across the board. Just a quick note, when you're finally done playing with a certain mod, you can just delete it from this folder, and that's that. Then when it comes to customizing mods settings and configuring them. Of course, you'll need mods that actually support configs. All that you need to know is, inside of that same mods folder, configuration files don't actually appear here like they do in your regular servers. What you need to do is head back to the user data folder, then into the saves folder, followed by the world you're currently playing. Inside of this, then mods, in here you'll see the actual mod configurations and data files. For example, Lucky Mining, we can open up the Lucky Mining JSON, edit with Notepad, and inside of here we can customize how the Lucky Mining plugin works, we can change the luck chance, etc. It's a little bit more confusing in that you've got a world by world configuration, but it does give you way more control than just a general config file for every Everything across all of your specific worlds. But yeah, that's basically that. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you're looking to set up your own dedicated server, check the description down below for a free guide on how to do so, as well as a guide on modding said dedicated server. And of course, if you don't want to have your PC running 24-7 for you and your friends to play together, I'd highly recommend checking out this video's sponsor, Apex Hosting. A huge shout out to them, and of course, to you for watching this video through. Do stay subscribed for more high-tail content. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.